Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, good, good morning. Good morning. How's our weekend? It was okay. Great. Okay. Yeah, I hope we enjoyed the first lab class, right? Yep. Okay, great. All right, so today is uh, the beginning of our third week. And we'll be, we'll be treating the chapter three of our test. And we'll be starting with the very first um, contact today. And what we'll be looking at in this third week will be vector and motion in two dimensions. Okay, we've seen uh, in chapter one, the description of motion, representation of motion in different ways. And in chapter two, we described um, motion in one dimension. We tried to solve some problems using a one dimensional um, approach. But in this chapter, we're advancing a little further to looking at solving problems that can be uh, that be in two dimension, which is the most common uh, scenarios to our daily living, okay? So it's not all the time that we have to take um, motion in one plane, which is motion in one dimension. When we say motion in two dimension, we're referring to a um, motion that can actually be described in two planes, that is in the X and Y direction in the horizontal and vertical direction. In chapter two, we gave us example of sort motion. We mentioned uh, the most common, which is the projectile motion. And then we have some other motion as well. So those are the things we'll be looking at in this chapter. And as usual, we'll break this chapter into three blocks. The first that we'll be handling today will be vector and its component. Then we'll move to a projectile motion and also we'll discuss the circular motion. We would not really go deep into the discussion of circular motion by Friday because we have also other chapters that will handle deeply the description of circular motion. But we can go as far as we can with the vector and component then uh, project, projectile motions. Okay, so our goal is to learn more about vectors and the use of vectors as two to analyzing motion in two dimension. Okay, vectors are tools for studying motion in two dimension. That is studying the motion's magnitude and direction because direction is very, very important to understanding motion in two dimension. So we'll be using vectors to do the analysis, okay? And we'll be looking at it in, in terms of addition, subtraction, multiplication of these components before we advance further to decomposing or like splitting the vectors. Let me use that word, okay? We have seen um, addition, subtraction, multiplication a little in chapter two but we'll see how we can actually apply digits to this concept to solve um, real life scenarios, okay? So we we'll start with the very first one, which is vector addition under vector and vector components. In chapter two, we are able to point out two ways we can do vector addition we're able to point out that we can use the graphical addition, which is the tip to tail method. We also stated that with the tip to tail method, we have what we call 
the net vector, which is the net displacement in this case, the example before us, we have the position P and then Q with the vector pointing to X as the net vector. And another name for net vector is, is um, resultant vector. Okay, some textbook we use the word resultant vector. So but we, are, we are using the word net vector here. So if we have this uh, kind of vector, such that we want to add A and B, we'll see that C will give us the resultant vector using the tip to tail method, all right? And the thing we should note, which we did not say in chapter two about vector addition, is that addition of vector is commutative. Now, what we mean by commutative is that A, vector A plus vector B is actually equal to vector B plus vector A. So this is a commutative relationship, okay? So addition of vectors are commutative. We should note that this is just the, uh, additional information we have for this chapter. Every other thing we've been told about vector addition in chapter two still holds, nothing changes. And another thing we want to note is that for us to say two vectors are equal, we have seen in chapter two that we describe vectors of the same uh, length, that is the vector, um, yeah, the vector, diagram, the vector direction or arrow. If they are the same length and they are pointing to the same direction, that is when we say they are equal. Because two vectors can be of the same length but what, when they are pointing to different direction, they mean different things, okay? So if two vectors are equal, if they have the same magnitude and direction, okay? So, they can have, we'll have cases where they'll have the same magnitude but different direction. You cannot say those two vectors are equal, okay? So the second method for adding vectors as we've seen before is the method with the parallelogram rule, okay? In, in this method, when we saw it the first time in chapter two, we discussed it as the method whereby one of the vectors will be moved to achieve the parallelogram shape, okay? So the example we have here for figure A, we'll see the vector D and E, and we'll see the uh, net vector as D plus E using the tip to tail rule, which is one method. But the second one, what we did was, we remember that tip to tail is actually the best way to add vectors. So what we did here in this uh, second part was to make a projection of E on this side. This is E from the first diagram tip to tail. So we completed the shape of the parallelogram such that we can use the parallelogram rule taking the diagonal line to be the sum of E and D, okay? So vectors are not fixed. They can be moved as long as they are pointing to the same magnitude and direction. But once you change the direction, it becomes a different vector, no longer what you are having in that um, a vector shape, okay? So we'll find that these two vectors, some D and A can be found using either the parallelogram rule or the head to tail method. But these two methods, they are the same method that we apply when we start adding digits to the description of these vectors, okay? Which is what we will be looking at today and also practice some of uh, the application, okay? So what do we mean by adding digits? It simply means we are multiplying this vector with scalar. Scalar quantities are quantities that has magnitude without direction. And the unique thing about scalars are, when in, in terms of vector, is that they cannot be negative. 
and we kept emphasizing this, the magnitude of a vector cannot be negative because the negative sign to a vector description is, us, is just telling us the direction of that vector, okay? And we have seen the component and signs that helps in the description of direction of vector. So let's see an, uh, two examples, the three examples of multiplying vectors with a scalar, that is multiplying vectors with different digits. Now, if we multiply a vector with a minus two, doesn't mean the magnitude of that vector is minus two, no. Minus describes direction, two is the magnitude, then the, the letter with the arrow on, on it is the vector, okay? So we see a case whereby we just multiply the first case, multiply the vector with a positive scalar. It can be any positive number. What is worthy of note in such case is that when you multiply a vector with a positive scalar, it will give you a different vector, but it will point in the same direction, okay? So this is the case here. We have vector A. We want to multiply A with just a put any figure here. Imaginary uh, description of this, let's say we use two, which is times two of A. What happened? This one increased in length, that is two times the A, but it's pointing in the same direction. Can you see that? So the second or uh, resultant vector of two A, that is two vector A, is the longer length of the same A in two places. So we have the resultant B equal to the number you use to multiply times that A. Every time you multiply a vector with a positive digit or a positive magnet, uh, a positive or a, a scalar, because scalars are always positive, it will increase the, the uh, length, but it will point to the same direction. Now let, let's look at the second scenario where Sometimes we say you multiply the vector with minus one or multiplying the vector with the negative of the same vector. Either this or minus one, it says the same thing. But the implication of this is that the resultant will give us zero. Simple uh, idea from the math that when you have one minus one is zero. Well, in the case of vector, we don't just describe it as one minus one, because what is actually happening in, in uh, the real life description is that if you're going in this direction and then we multiply a vector with the negative of that vector, it means it reverses back to its origin. Okay, so we see A having the same magnitude as minus A but in the opposite direction. So it gives us back the initial one, which is zero. So you come back to the point where it started from. So the resultant vector becomes zero. So in this kind of case, it's when we have what we call the zero vector and it's denoted by zero hyphen. So if you have two A minus two A again, we still give you this. So you keep, as long as you have the magnitude of the first in the reverse, uh, uh, multiplied by the reverse or added to the reverse, you, you will have the, what we call the zero vector, okay? So I've already stated this, the implication is that we multiply the vector by minus one. That is multiplying the vector by its uh, opposite direction, okay? So now let's look at these three different cases here. If you multiply a vector with one, it's not changing. It's the same thing. One times anything is that same thing. Okay, so we have the first one, A. But when you say 2A, what happened? The arrow of A increased in the same direction twice as A. 
which is the same like the example we saw in the first case. Now, what happens when A is multiplied by minus three? The minus already tells you it's in the reverse direction. So what happens to A? A is reverse and increase three times in length as its first one. So you see A, 2A and minus 3A. Minus 3A is three times the length of A, but in the reverse direction. So these are different ways that will be seen in uh, application when we come to calculating some examples of what we'll be doing with the vector multiplication uh, with a scalar, okay? So we've seen the addition, we've seen the multiplication. Let's see how the, the subtraction operates. We've seen vector subtraction before, but we just want to emphasize some points here. The principle governing subtraction of vectors is the same as the addition, but it simply means like adding a positive number to a negative number. So if you have five, for example, five minus three implies five plus minus three. So that is how we picture a vector. We picture a vector like the addition, but addition of positive to negative numbers, okay? So if we have A minus B, it, is, it implies A plus minus B. And this is the principle that guides us in, the, in a, a graphical representation of this kind of vector. If it's in scalar, we can get it straight out and, and do the calculation. But when it comes to graphical representation, we use the idea of the reverse, the, the minus implying the reverse to solve the problem. Okay, so let's look at an example. Here, we have A and B, vector A, vector B. You want to subtract B from A. Subtracting B from A, it means A minus B, right? So we draw A. Then we know that B is minus B. We reverse B. So you see the reverse of B, this B. Then we make we made the resultant, which is the net vector A minus B. So minus B, B was just reversed to get minus B. So this is the final answer for that representation. Okay. So let's quickly look at this. I will have just one minute to give us the answer to this. What will be the answer to this? If you have Q and P, and uh, what will be the resultant arrow for this 2P, 2P minus Q? The idea is take P, elongate two times, then reverse Q, then make a, a resultant. I'd like to see your answers at the chat. Okay, just one person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, yes, yeah, we got it. The answer is A, okay? Because we have P, we increase, Q will be reversed, and then the resultant. So A is the answer, okay? So we have a, a, a good understanding of the representation. Let's quickly move to how we can solve problems using um, scalar numbers to describe these vectors. Now, before we advance further to that, we want to quickly explain the new concept we call vector components. Now, in the description of vector components, we make use of coordinate system. We have seen this coordinate system before in chapter two. This kind of coordinate system with the X, Y description is called the Cartesian coordinate. 
the Cartesian coordinate system. We have other coordinate systems such as the polar coordinate system, cylindrical coordinate system, relativistic coordinate system, uh, homogeneous coordinate system, and so on. But we just want to stick to the description of vector at this level to coordinate system, which is a system of x and y axis. So we'll have the positive and the negative. Because we are, we are staying with just two dimensional description, we are going to be using just the x and y. Now we'll have three dimensional description where we, we can make use of x, y, z direction, OK? Um, we we'll have motion in life that actually can be described in those three dimensional systems, like the motion of the sun in the solar system, interacting with the solar system can be described with that, but that is beyond the, the scope now. So we're going to be describing the component, vector component using coordinate system. What do we mean by vector component? We know what coordinate system is. We know it is X and Y direction. But what is a vector component? Vector component is the component of vector that can be decomposed. A vector that is the process of decomposing one vector into two parts. We said that we can decompose this, uh, one vector into two parts that will give us parallel uh, this description to the axis. These are called vector component. This is what we mean. We have a vector A here. This vector A you're seeing here can actually be, de be decomposed or separated into its component. That is the component in X direction and Y direction. So we'll have the S component of this vector and then we'll have the Y component of this vector. So the description of a vector in its X and Y component is what we call the component of vectors, okay? So every vector will have its x representation and y representation. So the vector A will have ax and ay, okay? So this is what we call uh, the composition of vector or resolution of vectors, okay? So vector A, is equal to AX plus AY. Okay, so the the easy way to do this is you know that the vector, the, the decomposed vectors or component of the vector will point in the same um, the parallel to the X and the Y axis. Okay, so what this uh, implies is that we actually broke down the vector A into two perpendicular vectors. And the, the perpendicular vectors, you know, they are actually parallel to the coordinate axis. That is, Y is parallel to Y axis, and S is parallel to X axis. That's what we mean by parallel to the axis, okay? And this process is the decomposed or resolved vector. When you do that to a vector, that vector has been decomposed or resolved. Okay, so since we know that these are the, way, these are the ways we can decompose vectors, we want to see um, we want to see how we can apply this in calculation. But before we do that, let's see the tactics we used. For vector decomposition, it has been established that we we'll have two vectors that are prior to axis, we can describe each component vector with a single scalar. That is, we can say that the component A is, we have a figure to read component B, we have a figure to read, then we want to find the vector A, okay? So the tactics we use to determine the component of a vector, there are just three basic steps. The absolute value, you know what the absolute value means? In layman's language, it simply means ignoring the sign before the, the digits, okay? If something is minus six and plus six, the absolute value is six. So the signs of the 
the magnitude if it's positive will tell you it's po pointing to the positive direction when it's negative you know it's pointing to the um negative or left or down direction okay for y down direction then you get for the x and also determine the same way for the y that is simply making a parallel description of that same vector to the x axis and y axis okay so to further explain that tactics is what we have here that is explaining the statics and using scalar to describe the vector. So we'll have the vector A and we'll have our axes that are labeled already or calibrated or scaled. Now, from here to this place is two, one, two. So the magnitude of the vector a, a, a y is plus two meters. And this one is one, two, three. The magnitude of A x description uh, component of A in the x direction is three meters. So we can actually look for the magnitude of A. A is what? A s plus A y, right? So let's look at this one that is pointing in the negative direction. See our description uh, of, of this not pointing negative. The X is pointing in the negative direction and the Y is pointing in the positive direction. So we have, this is zero, this is one, two, three. So we have one, two, the, the BY is plus two meters. But look at the BX, it's pointing to the left. From our science of um, coordinate system, this is negative. So it points one, two. So it is minus two meters. So to resolve this, when you add this two, it will give you the kind of vector we call the zero vector. So another unique thing about the resolution of vector is we factor the angle, which we will see in the next description, okay? This angle and this angle into our description when making calculations. But this is also explaining the determination of the S component. This is one, two, three, four. Plus four in the positive direction minus one, two, three, minus three in the negative direction. So this was, uh, this is exactly the statement I was trying to make earlier, that in resolving this, we factor the angle, okay? So it's not in all cases that we have to draw this like this. We can project the parallelogram, okay? So if you project this, if you make dot, 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 the, the, the length here is equal to what you have here. So you can actually describe this using this triangle from the parallelogram rule of uh, addition of vectors, okay? So if you look at the way we are resolving this, there will be cases where they can give you a question that this will be missing, angle will be given, one side will be given, and you ask to look for the magnitude of A. We have to apply the principle of uh, the trig principle here. You know the Sokatoa, right? How many of us knows this? Yeah, Sokatoa. How many of us are used to this Sokatoa thing? Just say I, yes, here in the chat. Yep. Okay. Good, good. So it's the same principle of this trick principle that we use to obtain this. For the resolution of the comp component in the S direction, it will give us A cos theta, and the one for Y will give us A sine theta. Y is simply 
uh, opposite of a hypotenuse, which is sine. This is your y. And your x is what adjacent of a hypotenuse. And that is why we have x to be cos and y to be sine. OK? So just you, you don't have to memorize this. Once you can get this diagram and you know this, in resolving vector, you can just easily write out this to tell you which one is cos and which one is sine. Because sometimes you try to memorize, you, you'll be confused. Oh, is it x that is the cos or y? OK? So if you're given a question, you have the value for x, Sometimes why one of these values, two of these values will be given and you'll be asked to look for one. Okay. So that's how we got these two. Um, so another another way also of solving using the component of vector apart from this is applying the uh, yeah, Pythagorean theorem. In some cases where the angles, they will ask us to look for the resultant vector and they give us the components. So when we have the components from the components, you can actually determine this. Remember that we said for addition, um, AS plus AY, you can just get what A is. But when it comes to solving in resolution, because the angles are brought in now, we use the uh, Pythagorean theorem for this, which is the normal way we do the triangle, get your hypotenuse with a square, b square root of it. Then you get your tan using this. These are basic mathematics that we already know we are importing them to solving vector problems. But the difference here is in solving with Pythagorean theorem, we know that, okay, direction is not emphasized. But when it comes to vector, direction is emphasized. So we'll see the second case. The angle here is described on the S axis, right? But look at the angle here, it described with respect to the Y axis. And this description points the y axis into the negative and the x to the positive. So from the first formula that will have positive y, when it's pointing to the negative direction, you see the negative sign come into play here. And then the description of this, but the magnitude c also follow the Pythagorean theorem rules, okay? Okay, so let's see one example. Does anyone have comment before we take this example? Okay, let me take the silence as none. Okay, so let's take quickly the example before us, um, finding the components of the acceleration vector. Find the x and y component of the acceleration vector A shown in this diagram. They gave us the magnitude, they gave us the angle, we have A. So we take the resolution, this is A. To resolve this, we have to make two parallel lines to the axis, right? Remember that. And that's what we did here. The x is pointing to the negative direction, y is pointing to the negative direction. So as is negative, ay is negative. Okay. Fine. Um, we just added this calibration to help us know the length here to extend where to stop. Okay, where this one stops and where this one stops. Fine. Applying the formulas that we already know and bringing in the negative sign to point to the, uh, to explain the direction. We we'll have that the magnitude for the resultant is given. From the magnitude of resultant and the angle provided, this equation will be able to give us the magnitude for this and this. 
So it is minus six meter per second squared cos 30. And we've got this negative direction. We apply the same thing to this, we've got this. So we have been able to, just from the formula, tell us the S component and the Y component. And the question says you should find the S and Y component that they gave you the direction and the angle the magnitude. You see that it's simple, but the direction matters because it will define whether the answer will be positive in the end or negative. Okay, that's a simpler example. We'll be seeing uh, a more complex example sooner. Okay, before we take the, that example, we just want to emphasize something. That the same way we use addition, subtraction of vectors to solve problems in terms of um, component determination and resolution of vectors, we can actually use the same principles to solve, um, use component resolution to solve addition and subtraction, okay? We already know that the principle governing addition is the same governing subtraction. What is important or emphasized is the direction. Direction is very important in the description of vectors, okay? Because direction changes the whole sign of equation. So we have that, you have a vector, two set of vector A, so that is vector A, and this another vector B. The, re, uh, the graphical way we know is to do A head to tail and draw the resultant, right? The pyrogram way we know is to make projection, all right? You do X here, Y here, you make projection. But we want to see how we can use component to add this vector. So in general, T is equal to A plus B plus C plus to the end. You get the resultant vector by adding all the component vectors, okay? And in the same way, if you want to get the components of each of these vectors, you get it using the same principle, making, um, a new axis that is parallel to the X and Y axis. So you have for DX with the summation of all DS, DY with the summation of all DY. So D will eventually be uh, DS plus DY. But let's see this thing we described here in picture. So we have for A, resolving A, that is breaking down A, decomposing A into its Y and X axis. So we'll have a y, a x. Then we'll have b, breaking down b into the x and y axis. We have from here to here, x axis, here to here, y axis. So the resultant will be, remember from this equation, the resultant for a and b will be a x, B, X. So C for X as it gives you what? C, X equal to A, X plus B, X. Same applies to Y. The resultant will be the summation of this and this. So C, X, uh, C, Y is equal to A, Y plus B, Y. So we'll see how we can use vector component to also achieve the same thing as vector, regular vector ad, um, addition that we do in a normal way, graphical way. So this method of addition is what we call the algebraic addition. Sometimes we complete it by saying algebraic addition of vectors, okay? Mm. So quickly take um, the second example. Using the algebraic addition to find uh, the bed displacement. It's what we just saw here. We just want to, not a complex algebraic addition like we have here. 
This one is just straightforward. Okay. A bird flies 100 meters due east from a tree, then 200 meters northwards. That is, uh, change direction with the angle for five degree northwards. What is the bird's net displacement? That is, what would be the resultant vector for this description? So let's try to picture the bird's motion. The bird was moving to the east. East, you know, your, your north, east, south, west. Hmm? So it was moving 100 meters to east. Then at angle 45, it changes direction to where? Northwest and moved 200 meters. So from the regular um, description of head to tail, this will be the diagram. We're using the paragraph rule. Remember vector is not fixed. We moved, we just completed this. Okay, and that's what we did here. Okay, so the resultant is still the same direction and length, okay? So the next displacement is simply A plus B, right? From a regular equation. So from the picture or the uh, uh, graphical motion, we'll just apply the formulas we know to get the net displacement, okay? So first, if we want to get the S component of this, Y component of this, S component of this, Y component of this, so that we can do algebraic addition. Remember the question is using algebraic addition, okay? So to add the vector algebraically, we know that the component from the figure uh, for x will give you x is in the x direction, so it, it does not have the y axis, okay? Resolving this to x and y component, we only have x to be 100 meters and the, uh, and the y is zero because it's exactly on the x line. No description of y here, okay? So we'll have y to be zero. Then for the second motion, the b, we have, this is pointing in what direction? Negative x direction. So we'll have the x as is to be minus, remember this equation, s is what cos, okay? And then, This was described to us in both meter and angle, okay? The description of this is in both meter and angle. So we we'll use an equation that has both meter and angle. 200 cos, this gave us minus 144, negative S direction for the positive BY, okay? So the second boss is the description of this resolution, which is using, remember we're using algebraic addition. Good, emphasize, emphasis algebraic addition. So we'll have the component of uh, C, which is summation of the component for AX and AY, Give us this. This is zero. Positive, give us the same positive. You can see how the direction changed the value for the x. Okay? Because the res resultant vector is actually pointing your positive s, a positive y or negative x. Okay? 
So you see how that information sh is showing in the digits here. Good. So because we are using a um, vector description, we have to, our final answer will have the, the digits and the direction of that bed, okay? So the magnitude of the net vector is C equal to, we have the two value for this and this, roots d squared plus d squared root will give you this. If you press it, press your calculator, you get this one answer. So we can see that it actually moved, the net displacement is 147 meters towards the north of west, that is northwest. Because the question already told us that it moved northwest. Okay? So what at what angle? We can actually also describe the angle. The angle was not part of the question, but just to get our description perfectly, we can look for the angle, add that at what angle did it move to the northwest? The first one moved at 45. So this is 45. This is the angle it moved towards the Northwest. So we used this information. Remember to look for the angle. We used tan inverse CY over CS. Now we, we put this because when you're taking, looking for the angle, we're not emphasizing direction. Okay, we're only using the magnitude here. So that you know use the minus sign, okay? So that is the, this is the sign for magnitude, two straight line. So we have 144, uh, 141 over 41, tan inverse to give you 74 degrees. So at 74 degrees uh, inclination, it moved towards the, the Northwest for 147 meters. You see how interesting this is to use the information about vector, vector component to describe the movement of a bed. In the same way this can be done to describe the movement of any objects that we can think of, okay? So this is just an additional information to tell us or emphasize that when we have components of the vectors, we can actually, when we have a vector, we can actually add the components to give us the final value of the resultant vector, okay? So if I'm multiplying with a scalar, this C here means scalar. You can also do the same, use the same scalar to multiply the components. So let's take the third example which is our final example today. A car drives up a steep fall, 10 degree. A, a car drives up a steep 10 degree slope at a constant speed of 15 meter per second. After 10 seconds, how much height has the car gained? So let's try to put this statement in pictures, okay? Graphical representation. The car is driving up a steep and the angle of inclination is 10 degrees. So we have this place to be 10 degrees and it's driving up the steep and the magnitude of that car that is moving at the speed of 15 meters per second. And it covered the distance at 10 seconds we are asked to look for how much height it gained. From the question, we can see that we are asked to look for VY, okay? The V is given to us, VX, this direction, and this is VY, okay? So from resolution of vector, we see that this, this question is actually asking us to look for 
vy. Okay. So we know where this equation came from. Component of vector when it has a description of the angle. So we have v given to us in the equation 15 and the angle given to us. Vy is this. And the exact question is for us to get the height in terms of this description is meters per second. This is actually the, um, the velocity component. Okay. So we'll have this information. This information will help us further. The V, but in the question is how much height? Height is measured in meters. Okay, so we know that we cannot just say the height is 2.6 meter per second. No, this is a description of velocity. So that tells you you are going further to obtaining the final answer. Okay. So because it is also uh, emphasized that this is constant speed. Okay. So the car is moving at a steady rate and it moved for 10 seconds. You remember this equation from our displacement equation, okay? So we use the position equation for object in uniform motion. Remember that information about uniform motion, steady, for uniform motion, we said acceleration is what? Who can recall? Acceleration of uniform motion is zero. Uh, velocity is steady or const changing in a, a, a uniform manner. Okay, so from that equation, from the equation of uniform motion, we have change in y equal to uh, our y component, then change in time. So we'll have this times time to give us the meter. That's the final answer. So it means the height gain in terms of meter is 26 meter. This car has actually climbed the steep to the height of 26 meters. Note this is in your uh, lecture one and lecture two, the equation for position under uniform motion, okay? Yeah. Do we have any question? Any comment in the chat? No, all right? I know some of us have classes. You're free to go for your class if you have, all right? Mm. Well, let's just check our understanding. AS is dash the vector A. Go with the option. For those of you still in class, mm -hmm. have a good day, Mitchell. The magnitude B, B, B. Okay, great. So AS is the S component of the vector A, okay? So let's see this quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a hand raised. You can come to the mic. Hello, Jade, are you there? I'm here, sorry, I forgot. Okay. Um, I have a question. It's okay. from the first example that we did. This I don't one. Know if I go back. No, like in class, like the first, the very first example. This one. Yes, this one. Um, so when you were trying to solve for the y component of a, and you used um a sine thirty, like a sine thirty degrees, mm -hmm. I was wondering why. Like we didn't have to subtract like 30 from 90 because it seems like it was at a 90 degree angle. And, you know, like the AY was on the 
other side. So I thought maybe we were supposed to do A sine 60 degrees instead, since okay. we were looking for AY. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's this whole angle is angle 90, okay? But the acceleration, the English in, uh, angle of inclination is 30. Okay. If you do that, you have changed the angle of inclination. You have started on this side describing the angle of inclination with respect to y axis. Oh, okay. Instead of describing this with respect to the x axis. Okay. Remember in this first scenario, we pointed that when we describe the angle of inclination to the x axis here. Yes. And here we describe it to what? To the y axis. Y axis. So, if you check these two, two angle of inclination, this will be the description to the X axis and this will be to the Y axis. So if you do that, you have automatically changed. It's okay. Yeah, the orientation of the motion. Okay, I understand now. Okay. All right. Okay, we are looking at this. What would be the resultant? Which of the vector below represents the vector sum of P and Q? This is P and Q. Do I have answer? Mm -hmm. Because the answer is in this place, don't just go and pick the answer. Try to picture it. How, did, how was it this? How was it A? How is P plus this, this? make the diagram and you see, okay? All right, so we'll have so many other practice um, example. Let's quickly go to this one. What are the X and Y component of the vector? X first before Y, okay? So X, one, two, three, Y, one, two. X, two, three. Okay. Mm. So by next class, we'll be starting with the acceleration on an inclined plane. That is acceleration or description of vector as well to solving problems that applies. Okay. Mm. All right.